What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at Sovereign Syndicate, what I would consider a narrative game that is inspired by the likes of games like Disco Elysium, as well as Arcanum. This game is being developed by Crimson Herring Studios, and they were kind enough to provide me early access to this demo, which will be available publicly here in a couple of weeks. They will be showing the game off at Gamescom here in a couple weeks, and after that, the demo will be publicly available on Steam, and you'll be able to play it and check it out for yourself. Now, if you've played more narrative-focused RPGs like, say, Game Deck or Disco Elysium, you'll be more or less familiar with the format here. But in Sovereign Syndicate's case in particular, they are blending a sort of steampunk and high fantasy aesthetic with more of a slightly Victorian-era feel. But with this being a primary narrative-focused game, a lot of the action and things takes place through dialogue, and you'll have stats and things that you'll pick out and then use in dialogue, which will then use a system of skill checks to test those things, and there is combat, but you're engaging with it through the dialogue system, so not directly. So, in Sovereign Syndicate, we won't be playing as one character, but rather three in the full game version. The demo version has the first character, a Minotaur actually, available for us to take a look at. When we pick the character, we will be able to pick a sort of starting point in terms of our stats, which kind of determines the character's background a little bit and helps you customize who they are just a slight amount, which is a good place to talk about the skills. So, this particular character has four stats or skills, if you will, animal instinct, self-discipline, spryness, and wit. Actually using these is how you level them up. Using the associated skill checks will actually give you a humor, as they call it, which is essentially experience points for that individual attribute. And upon reaching 10 of these, you can then level it up, which allows you to pick a perk of sorts, which makes using that a bit easier. You can either increase the attribute or potentially even grab new tarot cards. Tarot cards are an interesting system that kind of replaces the more traditional dice rolling system. So when you're performing one of these skill checks, it's your skill plus modifiers against a difficulty level. However, instead of rolling dice for this, which is usually your modifier, you instead draw a tarot card, which will then of course provide a modifier. Now this can actually be changed a little bit as well because in the tarot menu, you can apply certain cards to that particular skill check, which can then provide benefits based on your attributes. Like for instance, drawing more cards, which overall is a pretty interesting system, but as you level up the skills you are using, you can kind of focus in on a specific aspect of gameplay just by playing the game that way, which is something I always like, and it's typically referred to as leveling by doing. Now, as you're using those skills primarily in dialogue, that dialogue itself is pretty good. Each of these attributes kind of has a sort of voice in your head approach that we saw in Disco Elysium, so you can kind of see the inspiration there. And from what I've experienced, the writing is pretty enjoyable and definitely seems to offer some flexibility as well. For instance, many of the options available to me changed a little bit by whether or not I picked up a cane at the beginning of the sort of scenario that you're in for the demo. And and at the start of the demo, you're kind of instructed to follow this masked man. However, with a little bit of investigation, I was able to find a completely alternate route through the title as well. So they very clearly are putting a lot of options to help you decide how to play the game. You don't necessarily have to go along with what you're told directly to do, which is definitely a good thing in terms of a game like this. And overall, I can definitely say that I enjoyed the demo for sure. My questions to myself going forward from here are whether or not the actual broad narrative holds up as the game actually releases and we see more content. You know, how well does that story actually come across? And two, do the options and variations actually hold up through the end of the game as well? And if they can manage those two things, I think the release version of this game will be very good if you enjoy more narrative-focused RPGs, which is clearly what this game is trying to capture. But overall, I enjoyed the setting, I enjoyed the writing, they're clearly putting a lot of thought into the options and presentation. So if you're excited about it and you want to check it out for yourself, in a couple of weeks there will be a demo available on Steam, and you'll be able to see this for yourself. But for now, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.